mostly in valuing clocks, you're going to gather your own experience, your own information from attending auctions, from visiting dealer shops, from going to meetings and marts of the NAWCC, if you end up joining the organization. So you'll begin to develop your own mental database of what certain clocks are worth. But there are certainly uh, ways out there to help you along. Mostly now we turn, to the web, we turn to the Internet and websites to see what clocks are going for. Even on eBay, thousands of uh, antique clocks are being sold all the time. It's important on eBay to notice what the final sale amount is because often, as you know, those bids jump right at the end. But you'll get a sense of what the range is and uh, if a clock has made its reserve or not, that'll tell you too the, the, the relative value of these clocks. But there are price guides. I've been talking all along about Trandu Lee's books that are reproductions of factory catalogs. Associated with all of those books is a price guide that goes along with it. Some of them are somewhat dated, but to be honest, Clock prices have not changed much except for the very top in the years since some of these price guides were published. Another book here too, this is a little dated now, but again you'll get a sense of whether you have a $200 clock or a $2,000 clock. I've also talked about the clock auctions of Bob Schmidt, which I'll mention again too. His auction catalogs, highly detailed, highly described, great photography, and after the auction, if you subscribe to the catalog, you'll end up getting the price list that again shows what these, what these clocks sold for at auction. So you may not have all of this in your head, but as you begin to study clocks and study what they went for, and as you're attending that auction, you're going to know whether to keep your hand up or not when that Howard regulator or that Seth Thomas school clock is up for auction, and you don't want to pay too much.